I really enjoyed doing Professor Simon's Sunday discussion on conspiracy theories. And you left hundreds of comments, and most of them <laughs> were brilliant. Your comments fall basically into two camps. Number one, saying that the concept of conspiracy theories is flawed, naming it a conspiracy theory. And in fact, having an open mind is a good way of looking at the world. And I kind of agree, and I think that was a very good comment, and I'll read out some of them in a minute. And two, of course, I got people who just wanted to tell me about their conspiracy theory, and they got deleted. So let's reread some of the absolutely brilliant, erudite, and amusing comments that we've had talking about conspiracy theories. So I'm going to read off my iPad. This is Casper7777. It goes on a bit. And it goes, Professor, one, the American government have a history of using the term conspiracy theory to make people that are witnesses to their secrets look like cranks. I think that's a good point. Yeah, that's great. You should never have a closed mind to something unless you research it yourself. Well, some things are a bit hard to research yourself. <clears throat> and don't become a dogmatic echo chamber, a monkey that is the enemy of progress. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. But then he makes the best comment, um, Casper. I just like this. I'm 99% sure that the earth is not flat. Yeah, great. <laughs> I really like it. Thank you, Casper. Triple, multiple sevens. Good comment. Moving swiftly on. Doug's Den. Doug says, maybe most of them are actually conspiracy facts. <laughs> A better question would be, why do so many people believe that what they're being told? Yep. Doug, I agree with you. Good chap. And Walter Kai Yen Pang. Great. And this is really interesting, and I think, <coughs> let me read it and then you'll get it. The term conspiracy theory has been weaponized and used against the American people by evil forces. Well, I mean, that's a bit of a conspiracy theory about conspiracy theories. But I can see the point that if you had a group of people believing in crazy stuff and you encourage them, it undermines the society. And I think we've talked about that before, talking about the dreadful British royal family and how evil forces are manipulating the world and trying to um, destabilize Western culture. So, yeah, I think that's... Good comment, thank you. Matt McD says, Hey Professor, the Earth is flat. Man never walked on the moon. Dinosaur bones are fake. All our leaders are lizards. And climate change is and climate is changing because of mankind. Um People believe all kind of crap, he says. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That one made me laugh. Brilliant. Mike Bahuka says, As a psychotherapist, I can only comment that I think it seems to be something to do with identity and something to believe in that gives people purpose in their lives. Yeah, I, I think that's really true. I think it's an indicator of what's lacking in our part of the world rather than what is at fault with the individual. Excellent point. I think you are right. I always like people who say that. Thank you, Mike. No, I'm joking. I like people to disagree, really. Anyway, Mike says, I think you might be right. I read that twice. There is a general lack of trust in people from people who govern. Yeah. Oh, uh, this one was one of my more worrying comments, but I had to include it. It's from Rene. Rene says, You, Professor, are a hardcore global zombie worshipping demonic goat lover. Uh, I am. Thank you, Rene. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so this is a great one. This is from somebody who has the brilliant name of Hmm. So Hmm says, Conspiracy theories are facts. Yeah. Yeah, a better question is why do people believe in those wacky theories and why do people want to call them conspiracies? Um, yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Present, past, future. Great name. And they say, believing in history is the first problem. Yep. History did not happen. History is man-made. History is all made up. And it's absolutely true. Just look at the word history, his story, not her story. Uh, you probably heard that. It's a bit liberal. <laughs> and then the other thing, my history teacher at school said to me, remember, history is only written by the winners of the battles. And it's absolutely true. Where do you ever hear in your textbook the story of the losers? You don't. Good comment. So back to the more serious comments. Glenn Day says, there's flat earth believers all around the globe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good one, Glenn. I like that joke. And Ratty Poe, great name, says, Hey, Professor, are tomatoes really red? It, it, it was slightly off topic, Ratty, but it's actually a really good question and something which I would like to discuss in a future film. And the answer is no. They're every other colour but red. And we should discuss that in the future if you're interested. Thanks, Ratty. Joe Pesty writes, Flat earthers bring a certain comic relief to life. <laughs> good one, Joe. I love watching their videos and their theories. Yeah, they're good. They're quite amusing. Everything should be on the table. Yeah, well, good point. Question everything. I think that's very much a kind of American uh, way of upbringing. But yeah, and I mean everything. Yeah, good. Nothing is written in stone except the Ten Commandments, which I believe in. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Moving swiftly on, Flambo One. This is a really good comment. The conspiracy theory surrounding the moon landing was primarily done by people who wanted to undermine U.S. psyche and confidence in their own country. I think that's a very good point. U.S., put man on the moon. And it's a very interesting story. I mean, it was done in the decade after a challenge by Kennedy and the US spent lots of resources. It was a space race. It was a Cold War project. And men did land on the moon. But when Neil Armstrong stepped off the lunar lander and said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, something happened, something that NASA and the US didn't expect. They thought, whoopee doo, US has landed on the moon. But what happened is it unified the human race. People from all over the world saw mankind, a representative, Neil Armstrong, from mankind, being the first person to land and walk on a non-terrestrial body. I mean, it literally unified the Earth. And I think it's true, you know, what Flambeau One says, that by dissing the achievement, the bravery of these people who, and the 500,000 people who put them there by the US on the moon is actually undermining US society. Roberta George makes a good comment. The only truth is that flat earthers are trying to make money by monetizing their videos on YouTube, just like you, Professor. Don't forget to feed your goat. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> the goats don't live on the flat earth. But yeah, thank you. Okay, Rotary Rockets says, Professor, it's easy to believe because people aren't all professionals like you, and they get lied to all the time. They're not very worldly and haven't traveled much and are rather dim-witted. That's rather sad. Uh, <clears throat> There's a lot of bullshit out there, and I no longer trust any of them. <clears throat> and this is the point that I, why I chose um, Mr. Rotary Rocket's comment. He says, 
<coughs> I research everything myself because only what I research and see with my own eyes, I believe. Well, I mean, that's a problem. I mean, good point, but there's lots of things which are beyond one scope. I mean, do you have a CERN particle accelerator in your basement? I hope not. You know, <laughs> do you have the money to go to the moon and look back and see the Earth as a blue dot floating in space? I doubt it. So, I mean, that's what we've discussed on this channel before. I think you have to have trusted agencies you have to have some trust in science if not the scientists you know some of the things your government are saying are actually good for you this is a bit of a rant now but i mean this thing about big business being more trustworthy than your government as a european i mean that's so worrying i mean so imagine there was a terrible natural disaster and the, the, you know, the country needed some incredible resources thrown at it to save people's lives. <laughs> Would you trust Hewlett Packard <laughs> to send you a life raft? No. You know, would Amazon still do their one day deliveries or disappear into their mansion in Seattle? Yeah. And would your government actually, through an agency like FEMA or in Europe, other agencies sim with similar names, actually come and help? Send the fire brigade, send an ambulance, you know, have resources like helicopters, oop, ow, to, to, to actually um, rescue people? Yes, because you're paying for that. So that's my viewpoint on that. So... <clears throat> Swiftly moving on, first of all, thank you for all your comments. Most were good. I did get one really annoying person, and they were so annoying, and it takes a lot to annoy me. I only really get annoyed if people are violent, uh, threatening, um, racist, bigoted, and this person was all of that. So, and made and did the annoying thing of leaving hundreds of comments, which took me hours to delete. Uh, YouTube do this thing where if you get a very offensive email, you can hide the user in the future, right? But what that doesn't hide is everything that they've done in the past. So if they've left abusive comments all through your channel you have to go through and find them you know who you are if you're watching you know, you've been banned and if you carry on doing that i mean really youtube are gonna just jump on you so just stop it now but on a more positive note i'd like to do more of these discussions and i am pretty thick-skinned and i think conspiracy theories was a good way of starting it and i've learned a lot from you so thank you what would you like to be Simon, Professor Simon's Sunday discussion next week? Uh, I have some ideas, but I'd like to hear yours. Leave them in a comment below because the truth is down there and I read them. Mm -hmm.